All right, everybody. This is promised in my previous video. I'm back again with a, a session here on transmission selection and ground speed, and what are you going to do with your off-road mower or your custom build go kart, whatever it is. So, uh, one of the things you hear people talk about a lot on on online, and it took me a while to figure out what it was uh, when I started looking into this stuff a year or so ago, was the term pulley swap, uh, and that's basically to something to get your machine to go faster. So this is your typical pulley that comes on a lot of lawn tractors that you know like the LT1000s or the LTX that I have uh, that are pretty popular for some off-road mower builds. And what you have is the smaller pulley here driving your transmission and the larger one here driving your mower deck. So you can't just flip this thing over in a lot of cases because there's a shoulder in here and the PTO of the engine only goes down so far, typically about halfway. Uh, some of them have an open recess where the bolt head sits in, inside, up inside, up in here. Others, like this one, have it enclosed where the bolt head sits on the outside. But the idea of the pulley swap is to cut this, reassemble this double pulley so you're getting rid of the small one and you're now driving the transmission with the bigger one and it sets up high here. And you can see the keyway there where it would need to drive. So one way or another, and this one's a little harder to do, this style is, than the kind with the, with the bolt sets inside, up in, up in, in recessed. Um, there's a lot of good videos on how to do that. Again, from my three favorite channels, from Doc Sprocket, uh, from Fearless Front, and from Redneck Computer Geek. So I'm not going to give you a how-to, but look those guys up and they can tell you how to do it. But that's what they're talking about, a pulley swap. And so we'll get back to that a little bit later, the size of this pulley and what it means to how fast your machine will go. So what I've got here is an extra rear end. I picked it up on eBay. It's used. It's kind of beat up. It's out of a wide body Murray. And like I said, if you watched my other video, I said a minute ago, I've got a Craftsman LTX that I'm using. So why in the world do I have this? Well, it was spare for one. I got it. I got an extra rear end cheap. Um, also, the wide body Murrays have axles that are one inch longer than the Craftsman. So right over here this is this six out six inches where on the craftsman it's five it gives me two inch wider wheel track and i already put on a set of larger wheels uh, off an alpha gt uh... larger garden tractor that has a little less back spacing so they make the front end tra wheel track wider i'd like the back to match and so i'm going to give this a try so this wide body murray uh... transmission is going to go in my craftsman now they're both of these transmissions. This one and the one that came in the LTX are Peerless MST-205s. Um, why an MST? Why do I like it? It's an oil-filled rear end. So you've got a plug right here. You can, you can't really see it, turn it around a little bit. You've got a rubber plug that you press down in there and you can fill it with oil. And it uses, uh, by the spec, 16 ounces of ADW-90. And I'm probably going to put a 7590 in it because it's what I have. Um, also, if you care to flush it out, you can put in a 10W30 synthetic motor oil. The viscosities are nearly the same. They just measure them differently because they don't want people to think that they can trade them in engines. But in a gearbox, a synthetic motor oil, specifically synthetic because it's non-detergent oil, will work fantastic. And I've done it for years in pulling tractors and other things. So, that said, oil-filled rear end, you know, the, the, the 930s, the 920s, the older ones are bentonite grease packed case. They're not made to be serviceable. They're made for a homeowner who never touches the thing, who doesn't know how to pull a drain plug and, or a fill plug in and check it. But those of us that are working on these, taking them out and running them in hard use, we probably want to, you know, check it every now and then. Just make sure the oil level is up to the center line of the case where it's into the bearings and through the center line of all the shafts and into the axles just like you'd like it to be to get proper lubrication throughout and if it's low you can refill it so um, again there's a lot of good videos out from from Doc Sprocket and Fearless Front on how they're rebuilding these things locking the rear ends and putting bearings in there's a recess right here on them you can put a, a bearing in that Doc has on one of his videos it gives you, even gives you the part number I picked up a pair of them I don't have them with me today though um, to, to show them to you and to give you that part number but anyway, so the MST is the rear end of choice for now, uh, unless I have to go upgrade to something heavier like an 820. But 
So you want it to go a little faster because in the original form it's going to go five, six, seven miles an hour. So real, real rough general rule of thumb is that if you take the uh, stock transmission like this and give it a one-to-one -one pulley ratio, which means that this pulley here is the same size as the one on the engine, you're going to get so, you know, at, at an engine RPM of somewhere around 36, 37, 3800 RPMs that most of them do, you are going to get between 15 and 20 miles an hour. Um, top speed on the road in high gear. And I misspoke earlier on my previous video about this. That I said that these transmissions had an overall ratio in the high gear of 7 to 1. And I was incorrect on that. I, it is 7 turns with one axle stop. The differential turns the other one twice as fast. So that equals out to a 14 to 1 ratio, which you can find by you know, turning this, counting the turns it takes to get one axle, one rotation of your axle. So 14 to 1 MSTs have, as far as I know, every one of them is the same, whether they're 5 speed or 6 speed or anything, they have a 14 to 1 high gear ratio. So, and I'll get into some numbers with that in a little bit, and we'll look at it on paper, I can show you. But if you select the pulleys, 1 to 1 is, is is what you'd like to have or approximately that. It's, like I said, it's going to get you somewhere between 15 and 20 miles an hour. And unless you're going to upgrade the brakes with go-kart style disc brakes, something out here outboard of the rear end, that's really fast enough. It is, it, especially if you live in hilly country, it's going to be a little bit dangerous to expect the stock brake to handle anything faster than that because it's just not much brake right here on these side of this transmission. So, you look at these two pulleys, they look like one's a lot bigger than the other. If you look down in the middle of the V, they are, let's see if I got that on camera, the one looks definitely bigger than the other. If you look down in the middle of the V, they are very close to the same size. So, a little bit of pulley 101. This was advertised and labeled as a 5 inch diameter pulley when I bought it, so it is indeed 5 inches in diameter. The term in V belts is diametral pitch, and that is the diameter at the center of the contact patch of the belt. So you lost about somewhere around a quarter inch there and somewhere almost another quarter inch to get to the center of the belt. So with that, and I really by rough eyeball here, this is a lot closer to a four and a quarter inch pulley. Now that's probably plenty small considering this one. Now you see how much farther that belt sets down in there. We've lost, in this case, a lot more like half an inch there, plus another half, a quarter for the belt. So this is somewhere closer to a four and a half inch pulley. So I'm a little above one to one. So I'm probably looking at somewhere closer on the north side of the ground speed there, closer to 20 miles an hour out of this, because I'm a little bit bigger on the engine pulley than I will be on the transmission pulley. And and Truthfully, I think this is about as small as you want to go, not only for the ground speed, but you have to be able to take this pulley on the transmission for it to transmit enough torque on the belt surface area here to get that power of the engine through the gearbox and to the rear wheels. And the smaller you go, the less distance you have from here to here to contact the, the belt. And then the less torque you can transmit, which equals less power. You can go faster as long as you aren't pulling anything or have a wet belt or go up hills or weigh 250 pounds like I do. So just a fact of design and limitations of what a V-belt can do on a steel pulley. So I've done it one-to-one -one on other things. I've got a go-kart I made that runs right at 20 miles an hour. It's got a one-to-one -one setup. I did use a cast iron pulley on the back end of it. You will get better belt friction and better belt grip out of a cast iron pulley than you will out of these stamped steel ones. Now, this one's one of the weld together style. A terrible looking weld, but I did it intentionally. I skip welded to, to spread the heat out as I went, so I've got eight welds on there that are each, you know, maybe half an inch long. Stay away from the cast aluminum pulleys like you get at the hardware store that have the spokes in them. Uh, they're a joke, and they also don't have any extra diameter out here to let your belt guides uh, you know, ride out here and hold your belt into the pulley when you step on the clutch. But that's the cheap route. I set out for this project saying I was only going to spend fifty dollars, maybe a hundred at most. I did break down and buy this. I think I've spent about nine dollars on this hub and pulley. So there's one more chunk out of my budget. But anyway, 
we covered that. So the MST here, uh, the Murray should go in. This is a little different setup uh, where the Craftsman has the, the lower lever down here. Uh, the linkage should work close enough to the same considering that I have also raised the body up uh, one inch. In reference my previous video, uh, vid number two on the uh, all-terrain mocart build here. Um, and we'll have to change this brake lever because the Craftsman has a tab over here and pushes where the Murray has a, a uh, rod that hooks through this hole and pulls this way. But, so to get to the nuts and bolts of this ground speed thing, that's one of the things I wanted to talk about. I'll give you some numbers here and I'll plug this into the, into the notes at the bottom of the video. But, I do this in a spreadsheet and it works really well and it's very convenient for handling a specific and finding a specific ground speed uh, when you're building a machine and you want to know what you're actually going to get so with the proper tweaking of the governor and maybe a little bit bigger spring from the hardware store you can safely get 4000 rpm which won't grenade your flywheel um, I know faster than that probably won't either but that's a safe number to use I've done it on plenty of engines and it always works so 4000 rpm rpm divided by the 14 to 1 ratio in the gearbox times 1 for your belt ratio or 1.2 or 1.1 whatever that is take your driven pulley or excuse me your driver pulley 6 inch or so divided by your driven pulley 5 inch or so and you will get 1.2 uh, times your tire diameter 22 inches 21 21 and a half whatever it be specifically get it accurate and you'll know what you you're, you've got times good old high school geometry pi 3.14 times 60 minutes in an hour and that gives you inches per hour your machine will travel divided by 12 for feet and divided by 5280 for miles and you have 18.7 miles per hour this machine will travel so 4000 rpm divided by your transmission ratio times your belt ratio times tire diameter times pi times 60 divided by 12 divided by 5280 gives you a ground speed that you will hit with a very close degree of accuracy if you've done all your homework right on those top row of numbers. So that's that. I put it in a spreadsheet and use it all the time anytime I build something. I just punch it in. I know that way. I know what I'm getting when I'm done at the outset of the project. And if I don't like it and it's going to be too slow, I make changes to accommodate. Or if it's too fast, I make changes to accommodate. But uh, so this one with the little bit bigger pulley here, I'm probably going to be in the 20, 22 mile an hour range uh, because I'll have, you know, what, about a four and a half here and about a four and a quarter here. And that's my plan at this point. So I think I've covered everything I wanted to cover. And let me know if you like it. Let me know if you don't. I'm new at this, shooting some of these videos and trying to explain this stuff to everyone out there, and hopefully it's helpful to you. Give me a thumbs up if you like it and give me some motivation to do more. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.